excellent question. If we have any attachments, how can we let go of that? You can't do that by willpower or by wishing. That's not possible. But the only thing that really can overcome attachment completely is wisdom and insight. Now you have to see that what you are attached to is not bringing you happiness, but disappointment. And then you let go, automatically. When you can see that much with wisdom very clearly, with this thing I'm attached to, whether it's my own body, other bodies, money, certain feelings or emotions, whatever it is, material or mental, external or internal. And once you see that this thing is only bringing you pain and suffering, or not, not only, but that the suffering, the disappointment is more, than any happiness you can get from it, then the heart will let go as a result of that. The simile I like to give is like fire. If you touch something really hot, you'll usually let go, and no one has to tell you. It would be very odd if you go to a barbie and you go straight to the grill and you take one of the glowing embers and grab it and then you run around and say, oh, I'm in so much pain. Poor me, why is it always me? Why do I have to suffer so much? I have much more pain than you're holding on to this ember. But people don't do that, man, because it's immediately apparent that it's bringing you suffering. And even if you don't know that it's hot, Sometimes some of these induction stoves, you know, they can be a little bit tricky because you may not see. If you have a gas stove, you usually see it's burning. But an induction stove, you, know, you may not notice when you put your hand there, thinking it's actually off. But you quickly notice it's hot. And the moment you notice it's painful, you pull away. There are some conditions where people don't feel pain, and it usually means they die young because they get all kinds of injuries. The pain protects us in that sense, because when it's painful, you pull back. The problem is with these attachments, it's not quite so obvious. And sometimes it can feel very nice. That is what the Buddha calls the asada, the gratification. He doesn't deny that. If you attach to your favorite food and you eat a nice, decent helping of your favorite food, while you're eating that, it's obviously not pain and suffering, it feels nice. But next time when you go to the dentist, maybe you like sweets, and he tells you there will be five root canals to be done, then the suffering becomes apparent. Or the next time you step onto the scales and, oh, <laughs> then the suffering becomes apparent. Or you go to the doctor and it turns out that you have got uh, diabetes, high blood sugar, then the suffering becomes apparent. Or you eat so much that at night time you have a spoiled stomach and you get nausea and you have to vomit, then the suffering becomes apparent. Here using an example of being attached to some nice food. So the trick is that often the Ardinava, the drawback, the danger, is less apparent than the gratification. So we have to sharpen our mindfulness and wisdom and very deliberately and carefully investigate that we can see the Ardinava, the danger, the drawback. We have to see it so clearly that the heart will just let go. Just like you're dropping some really hot ember, because you, you see it so clearly. Mm.